Good morning. Welcome back to Learn Breakdowns. How are you liking it so far? I think I'm loving it, really. And it's just very nice that even in this alpha, we are presented with so many, many features and options and then looking at the goodies still to come. And honestly, I found very few bugs, except maybe for definitely the breakpoints. But for that, I don't really deal out any punishment at this moment. In this Let's Do Alpha series, before the official release of Breakdowns, I'm having a look at how to build out sections, maybe a few quick tips. And now I also want to start looking at all the different elements that we have there. And in this one, let's start with the icon box. There's quite a number. If you go to add, you will see all the basics up here. I'll skip the basics for today and start with what is referred to as a block. And I can understand the mindset behind this. Blocks constitute elements. So if you have these guys, the basic elements up here, and you combine an icon with text, then you get an icon box. And I think maybe even a button. I'll bring in a section for that. So click on section. And in most cases, when you build out something like an icon box, you're probably going to put it in a column. You're going to repeat it, but it could also be stretched full width from left to right, start to end. And then select the plus here in the first column, scroll to icon box and simply click on it and it will drop in the container. I think off the bat, this is kind of what we expect. And what we see here is that we've got four parts to this icon box. We have the icon, then we have a title below that text, and then we have a button. And this is what an info box is. But I think you can probably add the border as well as shadows and a background to it as well. The first tab here relates to content. We can switch out the icon. We have Font Awesome, free, brand, solid, regular, and Icon Moon, free. And then I've tried to bring in my own icons, but I'll have to work a little bit more on that. Didn't work that well. Let's see what Icon Moon free does for us. Let's say it's an announcement. So this bullhorn rotate lets you move that in 360 degrees if you need to. Title, big news coming. And then your text here. You're going to add a little bit of text, not too much. Otherwise, it's not an info box anymore. Let's leave the lorem ipsum in there. And then for the button, click here on the extra styling. Learn more. Be the first to know. And then a link that you're going to add here, whether it's a jump link or probably in the future could also be a pop up. What's under settings? That's the URL light box contact and open a new tab. Let's go to styling. This is where you're going to make all the magic happen. Focus first on these two little icons that you see here on the left. That tells us that the icon box comes in with some formatting applied from the beginning and that you can clear that out. So we have alignment with background borders. Don't spend too much time on it, but that's kind of the idea that elements are brought in, styled out and given to you in the icon box. Currently, all the content is to the left. That's to the center and to the right. Let's keep it on the left. I like it. And then width is going to give us the box. Let's see if we type in 250 makes it narrower. 500, 700, and it won't go beyond that. It's going to be constrained to the width of the column. Background, we can choose the color. So background only color then, right? It seems no image for the background. Let's see solid, linear, and radial. Let's put there linear. I'll choose this first one. We put it on a very light blue. And then the second one, let's put that on a pink. The standard, and I think these colors are way. Yeah, let's make it a little bit more pastel -y. Good, and then we put in a radius. I'll just drag it. What is that? Why? I would like to type in there my radius myself, but I cannot select that. And I think also radius is strictly speaking incorrect. 
Zero doesn't start at 12 o'clock. Zero starts at 3 o'clock. Remember how we learned at school in math that if you have a straight line, then zero, and then all the way 180, 270, and 360. So two things here I would say that this is not correct in terms of the radius where it should start. It doesn't really matter, but, you know, it's conformed to what everyone else is doing. And secondly, I would like to be able, if that is the value, let me type in there and currently cannot do that. Not sure if that's a bug or a feature request. Let me just drag this gradient. So that's a little bit of a surprise that the icon box only can do colors or gradients and not images at this moment. I would say an image and then an overlay would be a good feature here. Maybe it's in one of the other blocks. Then borders, let's bring in a border. So the radius, I got confused every time I see this and I thought it's the width. Radius, of course, is rounded corners. So click, drag, nope, click, drag, or increase doesn't work. Let's give it something like 15, make it a little bit rounder. Hard to see. Let's put it on percentage, much easier to see. And I'm going to put it back on pixels and put in zero to give us those sharp corners. This will give us the borders then here under styling. So the width, I'll add a border of one. And then the color, let's put it on black. So just so that we can see it and the style, we put it on solid. We go through this. Now, currently, this is a little bit difficult to see truly, especially if you're working with a different color, how it looks. Because as you select the column, it actually gives you a black frame. And that makes it a little bit complicated to see exactly how the frame of or the border of this icon box will look. But just click outside and you see how that looks. Of course, I don't think that works because with that gradient, a black border isn't a good idea. I'll go and click here on remove all the functions for the borders. I want no borders. So if I click here, you will see I have no border. But we can bring in a little bit of background separation. That kind of effect where we make something pop up from the background, that is done with the shadow. So where are we? We have to click back on icon box and then container borders. So shadow is under borders. I wouldn't have guessed that. So we go to shadow and if you click on it, you'll actually see a very nice separation shadow added. So Click here on delete to remove it. And then I'll click again on add shadow. And I really like that default. The blur is probably too big. It's going to spread over into the column next to it. So let's just bring that down to something like 35. I like this unobtrusive kind of shadows. Not so in your face, but it gives you that feeling of, ah, there you go. Gives you that feeling of background separation really strange. Let's do that again. Container borders shadow. I wouldn't have guessed that. Mm, shadow under borders. I can think it. Remember the idea also in breakdowns is that if you are looking for something, you know it's there and you cannot find it, then you go here to search and you type in shadow. Why my search is not typing. Let me try again. There we go. And then you will find it will list everywhere you can add shadows like you see here, text shadow. Then you have, what is this, custom effects, wrappers. And this may also make it a little bit tricky if you want to which shadow to apply. But there is that shortcut in the search bar in the bottom left. This is our container. Then we go to the icon. Let's click on the styling. And before you do anything here, Actually, you should start here with the style, none, solid, or outline. If you click on none, you just get the icon, which I like. Solid is going to give you, well, a solid opaque background, and outline will give you a box. But ironically, it still gives you a background. If we put it on none, then you have your controls here for the color. And let's go and put it on white. And then for the size, I'm going to make this quite bigger, around 75. We can see it much better. And then radius is irrelevant because radius is rounded corners. And I don't think under none radius matters. Then let's go to solid. 
And then we have square, round, very well done. Oh, that looks actually pretty good. I like it. I'm going to leave it. Not, I'll, I'll still work with it. And then custom, where you can set your padding as well as nudge. What is this? Ah, this is a welcome feature. I can understand what nudge is going to do. If I grab the X value, you will see how the icon moves inside the box up and down. Often when you have certain icons and you work with SVGs that you got from other sites, they apply some padding or margin or extra space maybe around it. And when it comes in, the icon sits there in the top left hand corner and you don't know how to get it center aligned. This is a great forward future thinking feature. Forward future thinking feature. Brilliant. I should patent that. The background, I like that black actually on it. So I'm going to leave it. The padding, you can look at that. That will increase then actually the size of the square and the background, but I actually like it. So what is this 22? And then round will give us the round one, which is the one I actually like. And if you want to square. And then finally, you have outline that will give you the background plus it will give you an outline. Let's drop it back on solid. I'll keep it on round. And that's the styling. And then you have the position to put it at the top, which it currently is, then on the left and on the right. And then you have vertical alignment currently to the top, to the middle and to the bottom. I really enjoy this icon box. This is good out of the box. Very well done. And I'll put it back on top. And that is the icon. Topography gives us the title and gives us the text. The one thing I've picked up so far in the alpha is that when you work with paragraphs, you do need to go and make changes to the line height. That line height there is not sufficient or standard. And I'll explain to you soon. Click on text. And then for line height, you have to go here to advanced. And this is where we get line height. It's put to custom, which is also the same as M. And I believe it's at one. Let me type in one. Now it goes down a little bit more. So let's try 1.2, 1 1.2, 1 .2, and then take it away. It's actually 1.1, 1 1.1, 1 .1, take it away. Just between 1.1 1 .1 and 1 1.2. The rule of thumb is that at a minimum, when you're working with a paragraph, it should be 10% of your font. And the font here is 16 pixels. So your line height is 1.6M. And the moment I do that, if you were looking at that squashed line height, you would think, oh, this is a little too much. But trust me, if you want people actually to read what you are doing, you need to go for this value, 1.6. Having added this, and I'm going on a graphic design thing here now, having added this line height, the space between our paragraph lines and then this title looks more or less the same. And now we again have a separation problem Everything just flows into the next one, and we don't want that. We want a little bit of separation. Unfortunately, here we don't have a modular concept, so I cannot just select and drag and bring in padding like we can do. I'll have to go and add width here separately. I think spacing will do that for us. So after below title, I'll bring in 10. Let's see. There's already, I think 10 is already there, 20. 20 looks good. And that's where with the spacing you have after the icon, below the title, and then above the button. So not, <laughs> not below the text, above button. So let's make that 40. Good. And that's starting to build out really nicely. The button color is totally off. Let's click on that. and then. Go to the button. This is your primary, secondary, custom, and text. And important to understand, if you're working with a full website, I recommend you use these options. And then you go to your global settings. And then under buttons, you style your primary and secondary out here so that you don't need to go and set it up each and every time. Let's just click on custom this time. And actually, that's kind of what I wanted, that black. Take a step back and I'll add a little bit more padding at the top and at the bottom. Click on spacing and that will be the container. And then margin at the top. Is it margin? This should be padding. 
So let's go to container and see padding is here. Okay, got it. Let's add 35 at the top and 35 at the bottom. Don't see the difference. Let's try 50 and 50 at the bottom. Top looks a little bit more, so I'll bring that down to 40. Now we've created a nice info box or referred to as an icon box within breakdowns. And what you do from here is you can duplicate the icon box or you can duplicate the column and select the up arrow key and now I'm in the column and I'll duplicate it and I'll duplicate it and then these two right click delete right click delete and then I can go and choose different what did we use icon and we can use different icons for them I love that once you get used to how breakdowns works you really don't need to hunt around for stuff it becomes very super intuitive. Talk about intuitive. Let's just have a look at how this will be on a tablet portrait. Right. So our columns are going to stack on that. So what we need to do is go to our columns, columns container. And then under layout, force vertical stacking. And I'll do that from phone landscape. In this case, then we'll have to change a little bit of the fonts. What I want to test now is to see the styling, copy and paste of the styling. Icon box, let's go first to our topography and our title, and we'll bring the title font size down to 18. Or maybe too small, let's put it on 20. And the rest we will leave because we still want to read that. These three columns look horrendous and you can see they're being pushed over the edge, but I just want to test them for this purpose. Right click on it, copy, right click on this one and say paste design. Ah, oh, nice. Love it. Good job. Well done. And go up to icon, columns, and then spacing. Where is our column gap? Let's put in 10 pixels. Let's put in 20 pixels. We can actually. It's very difficult to design it like this. I would probably tell you, go ahead and just put all of these guys stacked. And then for the mobile, go to phone portrait. And here they go. They are already stacked. I'll select this. And I'm curious whether the alignment, where is alignment on the container, that is responsive. Nice. So if we go through that container center, Container center. Oh, I could have just done copy paste styles. And then also on the icon box, I'm learning, go to spacing and then container and then margin bottom. Let's put in 25. Let's copy that. Now we have that space there. Paste design. I can paste design here as well. Smashing. And as I'm looking at this one with the camera, this is where I want to just quickly look at the nudging. You can see that we have more space at the top than at the bottom. It looks a little bit misaligned. Let's go to the icon and then where it says style, nudge, also hidden. And which one? Okay, so I can just drag the slider. Perfect. I like that. That looks much better than the previous one. Thank you again for the nudge. I really appreciate that. Quite a lengthy video just on the icon box, but we are learning breakdowns as we go along and looking at the features. Thank you for the support. I'll see you in the next video from me, JP. Go well, stay safe.